the silence of winter, the stillness of Lake Erie, the mounds of frozen snow, the beauty before us. To breathe in the cold air and to exhale the feeling of warmth. It's unimaginable, but it's real. It's quiet in the early part of the morning. No stirring. Even the water is still. May the calmness of this morning bring calmness into our spirits and serenity into our souls. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Welcome to St. Hilda St. Luke's in St. Thomas, Ontario and Trinity Anglican Church in Elmer, Ontario. Today is the last Sunday after the Epiphany and on Wednesday of this coming week, the 17th of February, we begin our Lenten pilgrimage with Ash Wednesday. It's amazing how time continues to flow when we're in times of restriction and a critical stage in our history. The church movement and the church calendar continues as we try to provide worship in a way that is engaging and inspiring. As we gather, we pause for a moment, acknowledging we are in the presence of a loving God, and God is within us and all around us. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, on the Holy Mount, you reveal to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured Mercifully deliver us from the darkness of this world and change us into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is psalm number 50, verses 1 to 6. 
the Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This morning, our reader is Paul Lovelock. A reading from Mark. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and led them up a high mountain, apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared before them towards Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The past week, where I live in Port Bruce, within a, a span of 48 hours, the whole environment changed. When the rain started, and the winds howled, and then the snow began, and the tides were powerful on Lake Erie, within that short span, the seashore had changed, the lake was frozen because of the cold weather, and mounds and mounds of ice and, and sand filled the place where it was becoming more difficult to see beyond those mounds into the wider lake. And as I looked at this environment, I thought to myself, Either Mother Nature has created a whole new aspect of looking at what is before us, or the handiwork of God is at work. So in those last days of last week and this week, I've been walking through the field and some of the forest in Port Bruce. And as I have been walking, I discovered that there is a silence in winter. Upon my walking, I could hear the crunch of the snow below my feet. And as I continued to walk, that silence, aside from the, the crunch of the snow under my feet, was actually quite empowering. To listen to the silence of winter I began to, to realize how often 
I push ahead. I move forward and don't take that time to see the beauty all around me. To live within that present moment can be very exhilarating and life-giving. And as I lived and pondered in that present moment, I thought to myself, how overwhelmed I can be by the insanity of the world in which I live and distracted from all the needs and the attention of the world in which you and I live. And as I stood, observed, and listened to the silence, I could see some of the, the disturbances in this wonderful forest and field. The deer were beginning to move around. And listening attentively, one could hear the whisper of the wind through the trees. And oh, an occasional, an occasional song of the birds. Now, you might say, what does this all have to do with the gospel today? Well, the first thing it has to do with the Gospel is that Jesus was a hiker. He took three of his friends, Peter, James, and John, up the mountain. So they had to hike up there. And when they got to the top of that mountain, the Mount of Transfiguration as we know it now, there was a pause, and I suspect that Peter, James, and John were not fully aware of what was going to happen next. And what happens next is, is that moment of, of the Shekinah of God, as the Hebrew would call it. The glory of God shone upon Jesus. And in that moment of glory, there was his voice also that wasn't directed towards Jesus, but was directed towards Peter, James, and John. And this voice from the heavens said, This is my son. Listen to him. And the disciples response, It's good to be here. Let us make some tents for our other visitors who are here. For Moses and Elijah. And, and in that representation of Moses and Elijah, we hear the way in which this, this movement of, of history is unfolding, acknowledging the importance of, of the people of Israel and their story of movement with God through ex exodus and liberation, even to exile again and abandonment. And, and connecting all of those, those movements Together, the radiance of Jesus brings it all together. And the voice says, This is my son. Listen to him. And we have no idea how long this moment of transfiguration took. But obviously it impacted upon the three disciples and friends of Jesus. When they looked back at that moment, the, the idea of Moses and Elijah had disappeared. And everything appeared to be calm for that moment. And then Jesus tells them, don't tell anyone and let's go down the mountain. Well, there's two interesting pieces there. The piece about don't tell anyone. Probably Jesus is very much aware that, that in the exuberance of Peter, he may not be, be clear about what he'll be saying. So he needs to absorb the ex spiritual experience. And then let's go down the mountain. It may be good to be here, but we can't stay here. 
And where were they going? As we begin this season of, of Lent, we're traveling with Jesus to Jerusalem, to that place of arrest, trial, crucifixion, death, and then the explosion of death into resurrection. It's a tough road to travel. And I recognize that, that we have had moments in our lives, aware of it or unaware of it, where we have experienced the glory of God. Perhaps like me, walking through the snow, and being still and observing the beauty of all that is around me. Maybe it, it was at the birth of a child, or a baptism, a wedding, those stages of life where there's a certain amount of gratitude and satisfaction that everything seemed perfect at that moment. There's something glorious about it. Yet we know we can't stay there. We need to go down and beyond that moment. And how many of us, when we've had a wonderful vacation, saying it's good to be here, it's also good to be home after the vacation, but we try to relive that experience. And we know that that moment in time when we were present with that glorious, exciting, enthusiastic experience cannot be redesigned or recreated. As Jesus tells his disciples, we need to move on. And when Jesus tells his disciples we need to move on, we move on with our companion, Jesus. And we, we move on with our companion, Jesus, to acknowledge the, the reality of what we live, but holding on also to the present moment in which we can see beauty and give thanks for the, the wonderful of beauty around us. But knowing, knowing full well that we need both. We need that, as we call in the, in the spiritual journey, we need that mountaintop experience of transfiguration. We also know that we can't stay up there. We need to come off the mountain and perhaps check in with reality once again. Not that the mountaintop isn't a reality. It is true, it is genuine, it is our experience. And that helps us cope during our time of pandemic, for example, to be aware of the, the ongoing presence of God. Amen. Let us pray. Today, on the Feast of the Transfiguration, when Christ appeared in radiant glory to his disciples, when the human was bridged by the divine, we ask God's beloved Son to hear our prayers, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the church, that it will be a just church advocating for the voiceless, that it will be a radically hospitable church, welcoming all and offering Jesus' gospel of love and compassion to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who serve God and the church, for Linda, our primate, for Mark, Indigenous Archbishop, for Todd, Bishop of Huron, for Bishop Barry, Archdeacon Janet, and all who preach, guide, and minister to your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for peace.
create in us hearts filled with the kind of love that reflects your own Lord. Open our eyes to see you in others. Soften our hearts to hear them as they speak. May all we say and do lead to peace in our homes, communities, and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all in distress, for our brothers and sisters marginalized by poverty, homelessness, mental illness. We pray for those isolated by anxiety and depression, for those whose lives have been so disrupted by the pandemic and suffer loneliness. Guide us in ways to share resources as we are able, to reach out in friendship and compassion to others, to live Jesus' commandment to love one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for children and teachers and parents as many return to the classroom, that they will be safe and happy in their learning. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who are ill. Be with them, Lord. Grant them courage and the comfort of your loving presence as they seek healing and journey toward health. We pray in silence for those we hold in our hearts in need of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the dying as they end their earthly journey and those who have died that they will rest with you in eternal peace and joy. And we pray for those who mourn, be with them in their loneliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayers, Almighty Father, in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus, who prays with us and for us. Send your Holy Spirit to guide us to walk in your ways and delight in your will. Amen. Gathering all our prayers together, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you, and with all those whom you love and care about, this day and always. Amen. We will be publishing a worship service for Ash Wednesday on the 17th of February, and we will continue to provide worship through YouTube on, on Sundays. I know that you and I have been listening to the uh, premiere as to how some of those restrictions that we're living with at the moment may be um, lifted. I know uh, that there'll be a change, but we don't know what that might mean for our in-person worship and whether uh, that will permit us to go to in-person worship again. So stay tuned. May you have a wonderful day and I look forward to sharing Lent with you. I will once again be putting together a, a Lenten program on Tuesdays from 11.30 to 12.15. It will be on Zoom and hopefully interactive in a way in which we can share our reflections together on our journey during Lent.
birthday wishes to all who are celebrating a birthday and anniversary blessings. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord, even the most mighty God, has spoken and called the world from the rising up of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion hath God appeared in perfect beauty. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. There shall go before him a consuming fire. And a mighty tempest shall be stirred up round about him. He shall call the hands from above, and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made our covenant with me. With sacrifice, and the hen shall declare his righteousness, for God is judging. Sin.